Hi, good day everyone. My name is Remy Lachikwi, a third year medicine student from UCSM, and I'm here to discuss and demonstrate about Bollard Score for Pediatrics Clinical Skills. Bollard Score is a reliable method in estimating gestational age of a newborn infant. The scoring allows estimation of age between 26 to 44 weeks, but in the new Bollard Score, it can estimate starting 20 weeks. Bollard Score reflects intrauterine fetal changes as it undergoes maturation. It can be used after 4 days after birth or usually at the first 24 hours of life. There are two main parts or criteria of the Bollard score. The first one is the physical criteria which assesses the skin, lanugo or hair, plantar surface, breast, eyes or ears, and genitalia. The second part is the neuromuscular criteria which we will be discussing and will dig deeper as this video continues. This is a table used to assess the neuromuscular maturity of the newborn. It is composed of six criteria, namely the posture, square window, arm recoil, pupitial angle, scarf sign, and heel to ear. And each are scored from negative 1 to 5, where negative 1 reflects immaturity or premature with less gestational age, while 5 reflects maturity or has an advanced gestational age. Alright, so let's start! Posture reflects body muscle tone at rest. As a baby grows, it develops passive flexor tone that progresses from lower to upper extremities. The infant is placed in a supine position and the examiner waits until the infant is in relaxed or is in preferred position. Gentle manipulation of all extremities are needed to seek the baseline position of comfort. Heat flexion without adduction results in the frog leg position as depicted in posture square number 3. Hip adduction accompanying flexion is depicted by acute angle at the hips in posture square number 4. Square window describes the wrist flexibility. The degree of flexion and the resistance to extensor stretching determine the angle of wrist and the true flexibility. While the patient is lying in a supine position, straighten the infant's fingers and apply gentle pressure on the dorsum of the hand. Take note on the angle form between the palm and the forearm. The resulting angle between the palm and the forearm is estimated at more than 90 degrees, 90 degrees, 60 degrees, 45 degrees, 30 degrees, and 0 degree. Arm recoil determines passive flexor tone of biceps muscles. This is measured by the angle of recoil following brief extension of the upper extremity and watch its rebound flexion. As the infant is lying in a supine position, one hand is placed under the elbow of the infant for support. Taking the infant's hand, briefly set the elbow in flexion, count for 5 seconds, and extend the arm before releasing the hand. The angle of recoil to which the forearm springs back into flexion is noted. The appropriate square is selected on the score sheet. Extremely preterm infant will not exhibit any arm recoil. Square 4 is selected only if there is contact between the infant's fist and the face. We have to take note that we should not prolong the extension because it can cause muscle fatigue to the infant. Popliteal angle assesses the maturation of passive flexor above the knee joints by testing the resistance to leg extension while the infant's thigh is on the chest. While the baby is lying in a supine position, the thigh is placed on the abdomen, the knee is flexed, and after the infant is relaxed, the leg is extended until resistance is fully appreciated. Take note that you should not put too much pressure on the hamstring. Scarf sign tests the passive tone of the flexors above the shoulder girdle. While the infant is lying in a supine position, extend the arms of the infant across its chest toward the other arm. One hand supports the head of the infant in the midline, while the thumb of the examiner's other hand is placed on the infant's elbow. Nudge the elbow across the chest, feeling for passive flexion or resistance to extension of posterior shoulder girdle flexor muscles. Landmarks noted in order of increasing maturity are full scarf at the level of the neck, contralateral axillary line, contralateral nipple line, cyphoid process, ipsilateral nipple line, and ipsilateral axillary line. Heel to ear determines the passive tone above the pelvic girdle by testing for resistance to extension of the flexor muscles at the hip. Place the infant in a supine position, then flex the lower extremity and brought it alongside the infant's trunk. One hand will support the infant's thigh laterally alongside the body with the palm, while the other hand is used to grasp the infant's foot at the sides and pull it towards the ipsilateral ear. The examiner feels for resistance to extension of the posterior pelvic girdle flexors and notes the location of the heel where significant resistance is appreciated. The landmarks noted in order of increasing maturity includes the ear, nose, chin level, nipple line, umbilical area, and a femoral crease. The scores are added together to determine the baby's gestational age. The total score may range from negative 10 to 50 with a corresponding estimated age of gestation on this table, where premature babies have low scores 
while Born Late have high scores.